Good afternoon everybody, what's happening? Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the oil filter housing gasket on an M54 engine. In order to get the oil filter housing off of the engine, we're going to first need to remove some of the airbox pieces as well as the alternator from the car. So since the alternator needs to be removed, to be safe we need to disconnect the battery which on this X5 is located next to the spare tire in the trunk. Next, we'll remove the air box out of the way. And to do that, we'll disconnect the intake bellow as well as two 10 millimeter bolts located right here. Now we can lift this entire air box assembly out of the engine bay and expose the alternator. Just as a quick reminder, to remove that fan clutch, you will need these BMW specific tools. I'll put a link where you can get these in the description below. Now in order to fit these tools in here and hold down the bolts on the water pump pulley, I like to remove the upper radiator hose. Now I know a lot of you um, disagree with that and it's an unnecessary step to open up the cooling system, but in my past experience it's the easiest and the fastest way to access everything that you need to get to and that upper radiator hose is just one more thing in the way to make removing the fan clutch that much more difficult. I also find that using the slotted end of this tool is the one that you need to use to remove the fan clutch. This other end here is a bit shorter the distance between these two holes so this is the end you want to use. Now that I've loosened up our fan clutch, we're going to need to remove the fan shroud up at the same time. So there's a plug we'll disconnect from right here. And we'll also remove any plastic rivets that are securing the fan shroud to the radiator. And here's the little plug that we disconnected from the fan switch. Now we'll just spin that fan clutch and fan. We're going to go clockwise because it's the opposite. Righty loosey, lefty tidy. Now again guys, I just want to mention, you don't necessarily need to open up the cooling system here. However, this expansion tank also has a crack in it. So I'm going to be replacing a couple other things that I'm not going to be talking about on this video, such as the upper and lower radiator hoses, the radiator, and this expansion tank. Now in my opinion, removing that upper radiator hose is worth the effort because it makes it easier to reach the pulley and you're going to need to access that in a moment when we remove the serpentine belt off of the alternator. Okay, so here is our serpentine belt system, all of our accessories from a bird's eye view. Here's our idler pulley, here's our tensioner, and we're going to pry off this plastic dust cap so we can expose the bolt to release tension on our main serpentine belt. And that tensioner is going to use an 8 millimeter Allen socket. Now we'll just turn this with a breaker bar clockwise and slip off the belt. Reminder, be very careful not to pinch your fingers in between the belt and the pulleys. Okay, so we're going to remove our power steering reservoir. There's two bolts that are attached to the oil filter housing. We'll also pry off this dust cap and remove the bolt because this bolt is securing the top part of the alternator to the oil filter housing. And these are both 13 millimeter bolts. Again, get your flathead screwdriver to pop off the dust cap on that idler pulley. And now you can also give that a quick spin and test it for any strange bearing noises. This one we replaced not too long ago, last fall, so there's no strange noises coming from it. If yours has a loud bearing noise, it's a good idea to replace it, and they're about $50. I'll put a link in the description below. And this is a 16 millimeter. Now there's an auxiliary pump here. Let's disconnect the plug from it. And then we'll just slide this out of its rubber holder 
and out of the way so we can continue removing the connections on the back of the alternator. Now we can unplug the plug in the back of the alternator and remove the connection. And we'll loosen and remove the 12 millimeter nut. And now we'll remove that lower alternator bolt. By the way, this is a 16 millimeter socket. All right, now let's get that thing out of here. At this point, I'm gonna remove the two bolts that hold the power steering pump to the bottom of the oil filter housing. Then I'm gonna remove any plugs, I believe there's two connections, from the back of the oil filter housing. Then we can remove the bolts and pull this whole thing out of the car. Also check out all of the oil that is leaking from this thing. As you can see, the fins on the side of the engine block are full of oil. Now when you do an inspection on the car and you see oil in the fins right behind the housing like that, classic indication that the oil filter housing gasket is blown out. Now we can remove the two bolts from the power steering pump to remove it from the oil filter housing itself. And these are both 13 millimeters. Okay, now once you remove those two 13s from the front side of the power steering pump, there's also one more sneaky hidden 13 in the back. Now once you remove that last 13, the pump is gonna drop to the bottom. So we'll just carefully lower it down. All right, now's the fun part. Now we can remove the banjo bolt from the back of the oil filter housing, and then we can remove the bolts that actually hold this entire housing onto the side of the block. Now tucked away in the back, there's a 19 millimeter bolt. It's our banjo bolt, and that's the Vanos oil line that snakes through the intake, underneath the intake manifold and connects to the front of the car. And here's that bolt removed. Now we're gonna be replacing that soft Vanos line with a new one, and we also have new aluminum crush washers, which is necessary to complete this job so that you don't have a new leak after finishing up. Now at this point, I'll also remove the 19 millimeter banjo bolt from the front of the Vanos unit, and we can install our new line. Just as a note, you'll need to use a wrench for this because a socket and ratchet won't fit. Here's that Vanos line we're going to be replacing. So here's our old gasket, and this thing was like really as flat as a pancake. It was completely flush with the aluminum housing here. This old gasket is so hard and brittle from all of the years of heat and oil that you can just pretty much snap it off into little plastic pieces. Now we have our new gasket. This is about six or seven dollars. Of course, I'll put a link in the description below. And this is nice and rubber and flexible and that should solve our leak. Now before we install the new gasket, we want to take some paper towel or some cleaner and make sure that all of this is completely clean and free of any oil residue or plastic that may be stuck in here from the old gasket. And we'll just go around this a few times and make sure that it's fully seated so we don't have any leaks or problems in the future. Now, as you can see, I spent some time cleaning this up, gave it a nice little detailing and got all of the oil out of the crevices of our engine block. Now that everything is all cleaned up, we can reinstall the oil filter housing back into the car. Also, I just wanna quickly mention that we have two alignment dowels, one here and one here, and we wanna just inspect those and make sure that they're not broken and that they're seated into place.
Now we're pretty much just going to set the housing onto those alignment dowels so that we can now install the bolts one at a time back into the block. Now I'm just carefully going around and evenly uh, screwing the bolts back into the block. Then I'm going to go back for a final tightening with our torque wrench. Now we'll install the new Vanos line and we'll reattach that Vanos line to the back of the oil filter housing with two new aluminum washers. And we'll torque those down with a 19 millimeter. Now I'm also going to plug in some of the harnesses on the back of the oil filter housing for the oil temperature and pressure sensors and as you can see one of them is marked with blue tape so I don't mix them up. Okay now we can reinstall the power steering pump to the oil filter housing. Remember there's three bolts. and our longest bolt goes right through here. And the slightly shorter bolt will go closer to the oil filter housing. And finally we have the short stubby bolt which goes underneath in the back which I previously called the sneaky bolt. And we'll tighten those up with a 13. Next, we'll put the alternator back in. This bolt goes in the bottom. Our other long bolt with the idler pulley or tent deflection pulley goes in the top. And we'll also tighten this with a 16. We'll reinstall the alternator connections in the back. And reinstall the nut on the back of the alternator. Now we can reinstall the power steering fluid reservoir to the oil filter housing. We'll slide the auxiliary water pump back into its rubber housing and plug it in. And we'll reinstall the serpentine belt. Don't forget to snap the dust caps back into place. And now we can reinstall the air box. We'll reinstall the 10 millimeter bolts that secure the air box to the car. Reconnect our upper radiator hose. And finally, at this point, we can reinstall our clutch fan and fan with the radiator shroud. Then we can top up the car with coolant if you decided to open up the top radiator hose. If not, don't worry about the coolant. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please support my channel by clicking the like button and subscribe.